This is a short video on drugs that are used to treat asthma, the obstructive airway disease. Now, before we begin, we want to give a brief introduction to the pathogenesis of asthma. Asthma is typically, typically caused by a trigger, such as an antigen, an irritant. It could be stress. It could be exercise. It could be hypoxia. There's a whole list of triggers for asthma. But either way, these triggers are going to release some mediators that cause inflammation. The inflammation involved with asthma involves the proliferation and invasion of several white blood cells, including lymphocytes, eosinophils, macrophages, and mast cells. There's also a release of several mediators, including IgE, IL-5, and leukotrienes. Now, each of these are important in how the drugs used to treat asthma work. It's important to their mechanism of action, and we're going to be talking about that. So three of the main effects from asthma inflammation are sympathetic bronchospasm. Now this is mediated with the beta-2 adrenergic receptor. There's also a bunch of mucus secretion, including vasodilation, collagen deposition, alveolar remodeling, hyperplasia, all, this, all the phenotypic effects of asthma, everything that happens to somebody with asthma during an attack. And there's something called reflex parasympathetic bronchospasm. It's not really understood how this works, but the, bronco, the bronchospasm causes the muscles around the airways to constrict, causes them to, to tighten, and it makes the symptoms worse. It's a reflex parasympathetic bronchospasm. We're going to be talking about how different drugs interfere with different parts of this pathway. Now, this is a list of all the drugs whited out. We're going to be going through them one by one. The main drug used for asthma rescue therapy, this is when somebody's having an asthma attack and they need quick acting results, is a beta 2 agonist, specifically a short acting beta 2 agonist. Most commonly used is albuterol. Again, this is used when somebody has an asthma attack. They uh, spray some albuterol down their throat and it, re it, re it relieves the sympathetic bronchospasm that's associated with the inflammation uh, that, 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 is, that is a result from asthma. Now, Sympathetic, or excuse me, now beta-2 agonists like albuterol cannot really be used long term. They lose their effectiveness over time. The body begins to reduce the amount of receptors for these drugs. So in order to have a long term medication that we can use to treat asthma inflammation uh, quite chronically, we use long acting beta agonists like salmeterol and fometerol combined with corticosteroids. It's very important that these drugs be used together. If the long acting beta agonists are used alone, they can have deleterious effects. They can make asthma worse. Inhaled corticosteroids are important with them. They increase the prevalence of the beta-2 adrenergic receptors. And inhaled corticosteroids are also important because they are inhaled. We do not want the uh, side effects of systemic corticosteroid use, which include fat redistribution, some emotional effects, um, and, and other side effects of, of chronic corti corticosteroid use. So always used inhaled corticosteroids and log-acting beta-2 agonists together. It's possible to block leukotrienes that are involved in the asthma inflammation. It's easy to remember these drugs like Montelukast because they all have L-U or L-E-U in them, just like the word leukotriene. Now, leukotrienes, if you remember, uh, are, are a result of arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid can be catalyzed by either COX or LOX. One of the types of asthma is, is induced by aspirin use, which is an NSAID that blocks the COX enzyme. And it causes asthma because it, it causes arachidonic acid to be catalyzed by LOX into leukotrienes. Leukotriene blockers would resolve this kind of asthma and prevent inflammation as a result of leukotrienes released by the lipid mediators. Another drug we can use are phosphodiesterase inhibitors. This includes caffeine and theophylline. These block the mediators that cause the inflammation, and they essentially allow for the buildup of cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP has a couple roles in preventing inflammation. It's in the pathway for beta agonist activation. So it allows the beta agonists to work a little better. It's, it's downstream in that G protein pathway. Cyclic AMP also has an effect on mast cells and it prevents degranulation of mast cells, which also prevents inflammation. A newer class of drugs for asthma treatment include monoclonal antibodies, specifically omalizumab for anti-IgE effects and mepolizumab for anti-IL-5 effects.
Now, IL-5 stimulates the release of eosinophil granules. It recruits eosinophils. It allows them to release mediators like histamine. So using mepolizumab prevents eosinophils from contributing to the inflammation caused by asthma. Opalizumab, on the other hand, is anti-IgE. Anti-IgE means that the mast cells will not will not be active. This prevents the pathway involved with IL-4, where, uh, where the B cells do class switching from IgG to IgE. And if you administer omalizumab, the IgE will not be effective. These two antibodies are relatively new, but they've shown to have improved results in people with asthma. And finally are the muscarinic antagonists. Now this uh, class of drugs involves the reflex parasympathetic bronchospasm. The bronchospasm that, uh, that contributes to many of the symptoms of asthma is activated by the parasympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system, of course, requires the use of acetylcholine uh, to activate the cholinergic at the cholinergic muscarinic receptors. The muscarinic receptors are at the end of the nerve terminals that activate the smooth muscles around the respiratory tract directly. So these muscarinic antagonists such as ipratropium or teatropium block those muscarinic receptors and prevent the parasympathetic nervous system from causing the bronchospasms. These are easy to remember because they all end with M and they all block the muscarinic antagonist. Muscarinic starts with an M and these drugs end with an M and they block the reflex parasympathetic bronchospasm. That's all the drugs that we have to treat asthma right now. There are some new ones on the market, but these are the main classes that are currently in use. Thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful.